Hello, so in this video we're going to be looking at the Wall Street crash which happened in October 1929 and ended the booming 1920s and that period of economic prosperity that America and much of the world had seen at that time. Now we're going to be looking at four main causes which are identifiable on their own but are very interlinked together as well. So we're going to start off with the stock market to start off with where the Wall Street crash gets its name from. Now Throughout the 1920s was what was called a bull market where prices of stocks continued to increase so that people were buying, a, buying stocks at a lower price and the price would gradually increase. They'd be able to sell those stocks and make a profit. Now, people up until 1929 were still believing that this was going to continue to increase in price and they were what is called buying on the margin, which means that they didn't really have the money to buy the shares, but they were borrowing the money buying the shares with the hope that when the prices rise they'd be able to sell those shares and make a profit pay off the bank and still have money left over. Now what happened is the prices of shares started to drop. Now this really made people panic and then people started to try selling shares. Those people who would borrowed money found that actually the shares that they'd bought were now worth virtually nothing and a lot less than the money that they actually borrowed and would still owe. So this led to this shock in the market and actually in, the, in one day in October 1929 between 10 and 15 billion dollars was wiped off the value of stocks and shares on the stock exchange. Now linked into this and that lack of confidence is banks. Now many banks in America, there was a lot of very small banks that basically did not have enough reserves, cash reserves in the bank to be able to pay everyone their money back. So when the stock market crashed, when people started losing the jobs, they went to the bank to take the money out and the banks did not have enough money in the bank to pay everyone out. So what this led, then led to is banks shutting down and people not being able to access all of that money that they had saved up. Now the third cause we're going to look at of the Wall Street crash is overproduction and a lack of demand. So particularly in agriculture, throughout the 1920s had been a real overproduction. So the farmers were producing far too much produce and there wasn't enough demand for it. So what this meant was that prices were going really low and that farmers were actually having to destroy and get rid of some of the things that they were making because its value there was no demand for it, this value was worthless. And linked to that is this idea that by 1929, a lot of those goods that people had already bought, so they might have bought these on credit, things like cars and other luxury items, they weren't going to keep buying new ones over and over and over again. So what this led to is a real lack of demand. Now when there was that lack of demand, then people started to lose the jobs because companies weren't, weren't going to keep producing things. And that then led to an even further lack of demand, a bit like an opposite of the cycle of prosperity, where people then had no jobs, had no money, and therefore demand dropped even further. And then finally, we're going to look at how this became a worldwide problem. Now, because of World War I, countries in Europe had borrowed huge amounts of money from America and American banks and American investors. Now, when the Wall Street crash happened, these American banks and the American government requested all of that money back that they'd lent, the debt that Europe owed to America. And then the same kind of impact on confidence then hit Europe because it simply could not afford to pay back such huge amounts in such a quick time scale. So that's a really quick overview of why the Wall Street crash happened in October 1929.